Jesus to say to him, show me your glory, and he saw his glory. If you will say, show me your glory, you too will see his glory. The Bible says, seek and you will do what? You will find. You hear me? The time of our captivity has expired. Do you know that your Redeemer lives? I decree from today, nobody will shine with your star. You will expand. Receive power to expand. Nobody will shine with your destiny. Nobody will shine with your glory. In the name of Jesus. Word of life. Building nations. Western lives. Changing the world with the word of God. Your instructions is the fear with which we journey on the earth. This morning again, we have come to your petrol station waiting for refilling of our hearts with your oil of instructions. When David observed this, he said, Your word is a light unto my path and a lamp to my feet. Without the instructions of your word, we will stumble on the way. For Jesus said, No one walketh in the night that stumbles, but anyone that walketh in the dark stumbles because he has no light. Your word is that light. Give us the revelation of your word. Beyond the letters of the scriptures, show us the spirit beyond the letters. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. This morning, briefly, I want to speak on the topic I titled Gilgal. Gilgal. You have heard the word before, two of us. It's a word from the scriptures Gilgal. A very important place. You know, by Jewish tradition and custom, they don't just give names. Do you know? They give names based on happenings. They don't just name a place. Gilgal is a name of a place. But Jews don't just name a place. Ichi. Otolo. They name a place based on happenings based on events they also give names based on circumstances that is why when a child is born by the surroundings of his birth he is named moses simply means a child that was drew from what we are what and actually he was drew from what i so he was named moses even when god was about to name jesus he, he was able to mention specifically his, his duties, what he was coming to do, and he named him, he said, he will be named, he will be called Jesus, for he will be the Savior. So, based on what he was to do, he was named. You remember when Russia gave birth to Benjamin, because of the pains of the birth, it was too much on her. She looked at that baby and called the baby Ben Onya. And the father said, No power. Thank God the father was around. Jacob was around. Jacob said, No, ma. He will not answer Ben Onya. He will answer Benjamin. He changed it. Had he been the father of Jabez, was around. Jabez might not have suffered all through his life before he broke it by the power of prayers. We have treated that topic here, three of us, the blessings of prayers. Go and check it. I think 
we treated it up to part eight so when you go and buy the tape you will listen to the blessings of prayers part one part two part three part four part five part six part seven part eight we are treating on the prayers of jabez jabez suffered much why the mother said i bore you in pains therefore your name shall be called pains jabez and the man began to suffer and remember the bible says he was more honorable than his brothers which means his destiny was big his destiny was mega his destiny was heavy yet he was suffering because of one incident so Gilga was also a place we want to consider what happened why was that location called Gilga what are we going to learn and apply to our own lives in the next 20 minutes Joshua chapter 5 Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Oh my Jesus. My beautiful Jesus. Heaven and earth they bow and worship at your feet. You are awesome. Awesomely awesome Even the angels bow and tremble at your beauty Himarama Himakare Rimanama Idebube Otionye de Kaki Himarama in my career, in my mind, he did move me. You're handsome, handsome, Lord, you're beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. We worship you. Oh Lord, we worship you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful, Lord. You are beautiful. So it was when all the kings of Amorite, who were on the west side of Jordan, and all the kings of the Canaanites, who were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel at that time the Lord said to Joshua at that time you have to notice some silent words in the scriptures at that time so what time was that we are going to see them briefly our time is too short but God will help us at that time the Lord said to Joshua make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel against the second again the second time so Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the heel of foreskin and this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them all the people who came out of Egypt who were males all the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. For all the people who came out had been circumcised but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not he would not show them the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers that he will give them. A land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons whom he raised up in their place. For they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in the places 
in the camp till they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal till this day. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month and twilight of the plain of Jericho. And they ate of the produce of the land on, on the day after the Passover, on living bread and parched grain on the very same day. Then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the Canaan, of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Jericho and Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or against us? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say? To his servant. Then the commander of the lost army said to Joshua, Take your sandals off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. This is the word of the Lord. Gilga, a very important place in the scriptures. We are in the month of winning every battle. Remember? Now, to win every battle, the happenings, what happened in Gilgal is worthy of learning. When, the, when God met Abraham, there was a covenant God established with Abraham. And God said unto Abraham, this covenant will be everlasting covenant among all the covenants God entered with Abraham that covenant was a lasting ordinance what was the covenant the covenant of circumcision that is why in theology we believe that Igbos Igbos are actually a descendant of biblical Hebrews because before the advent of Christianity in Igbo land Igbo people had been circumcising their male children at the eighth day, which means the tradition came from their forefathers. It was a tradition of circumcision. Now, when they left Egypt, remember they murmured when God sent, asked Moses to send 12 spies to go and spy Canaan. They brought bad, bad reports, and the people murmured against God. And God vowed to Moses. I will make sure all of them west in the wilderness. So, during the 40 years of travel in the wilderness, they were marrying, they were giving birth, but those men were not being circumcised. Now, they came to a place in the days of Joshua, they were about to fight one of their toughest battle, which was battle against Jericho. If you go down to the previous chapters, the Bible says, now, okay, in the cha next chapter, the Bible says, now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the people of Israel. What happened? When the surrounding kings, including Jericho, heard what God did for the people of Israel, the Bible says, their heart melted. They became afraid. Most times, you are wondering, why, why are people treating me this way? What did I do to people? No, you did nothing. Your offense is simply because they have heard how much God is helping you. They are intimidated. When somebody is intimidated about the sources of another person, 80% of people will begin to scheme evil. How do I pull him down? How do I blackmail him? How do I? That is human being. It started from the scriptures. If you go down, why did Balaam Balak hired Balaam to come and curse the people of Israel. He saw how much God has helped them. He became afraid of them. 
and he wanted to fight them. Again, the Bible says, when the people heard the surrounding nations, including Jericho, heard how, how God dried the sea for them to pass on dry land. He heard how much God has helped them. Their heart melted. Their heart left them. They began to skin evil. God immediately understood that the people of Israel cannot win that battle. They were about to face Jericho, but they will be defeated. Why? There was something they need to do. The Bible says at that time, what was that time? The time if you are being schemed against them. What was that time? The time the Jericho and the other nations were preparing to fight them. What was that time? The time God knew they will fail. God said to Joshua, if you want to win this battle, get a knife. Circumcise every male child that is not yet circumcised. When I was saying the opening prayer, I said something that the fear with which we make journey on this earth is God's instructions. The more you receive instructions, the more you receive instruction, the more you push. You know, when you are moving in the night with your car and your car didn't have a good light, will you speed up? You will not speed up. Why? The light is poor. But when you have a good light in your car, that when you throw your light from here, it can reach across the police station. Will you speed up? The more you have light, the more you speed up in life. Now, what is the light? The word. What is the word? The instructions of God. What is the light? David said, your word is a lamp unto my feet. And what? A light unto my path. The more light you have, the faster you go in life. Yeah. The more light you have, the more you speed up in your destiny. The more instruction you have, the more you speed up. God knew they we fell and the instruction came. Brother, God said, Joshua, if you want to succeed what is about to come, when I circumcise every child that is not yet circumcised. And you know, to circumcise an adult is not a small matter. Even when a baby of eight days is circumcised, he may cry for three days. Mothers, am I correct? After circumcision, the baby will be what? Crying. Now, how much more an adult? How much more an adult? But do you know, when God gives instruction, the pains of instruction is not God's business. God's business is for you to make up your mind to obey him. Or you lose battles. Hey God, I have a me. How can you circumcise me at this age? Do you want me to die? That's your business. There was a time one of the teams in our diocese was it she? Is she synod? Near with diocese undress for circumcision. One of our teams near with diocese do what? Undress for what? For circumcision. And you know, for circumcision to take place, one, you will be naked. Why God had not been able to circumcise so many people is that there are a lot of cover-up. When you undress, God will be able to circumcise you. Your age in Christianity, your status in Christianity, irrespective. You may be a canon like me, but God will be saying, I need to circumcise you. They have passed the age of circumcision. The instruction is at the age of eight. Eight days, not eight years. Circumcise them. Some of them we are 38. Some of them we are 30. 
But God said, no. If you have jumped class, go back for circumcision. Or else, these people are scheming evil to you. Let me tell you, every day, Satan and his cohorts are scheming evil against us. Every day they want to pull us down. Every day they want to destroy us. When they see, anytime you're sharing testimony, anytime you're celebrating the mercy of God, you need to understand there are people at the other camp whom their hearts are melting because of what God has done for you. It's not everyone that is saying, hey, thank God with you. I actually thanking God. Are you with me? The people heard that God dried a whole sea for these people to pass. Instead of trying to align with their God, they were afraid of them. The Bible says their heart melted. Their heart left them. They began to scheme evil. God knew there was a battle to come. There was no way these people can win. And he said, Joshua, you are about to face terrible things. Now, do what? Circumcise them. Immediately, Joshua made a knife. And he began to circumcise all of them. After the circumcision, God said to them, Stay here until you are healed. What is Gilgal? The Gilgal is a place of staying and waiting on God until he equips you for the journey ahead. Gilgal is that place where you stay and wait on God until he fortifies you. We rush out easily. That's why there are so many casualties. Gilgal is that place you wake up early in the morning. You wait on God to fortify you for the battle for the day. Some people rush into the battle of the day anyhow. They are too busy. They are going late to work. They are going late to business. They are going late to school, to school run. They are going so many things late. They rush out without experiencing Gilgal for the day. After the circumcision, God did not allow them to rush into the battle immediately. After the circumcision, God did not allow them to start their normal activities immediately. After the circumcision, God did not allow them to start doing things they know how to do. God said to them, no, stay here. I wouldn't know how many days. I wouldn't know how many weeks. I wouldn't know how many months. But what happened was that they tarried at Gilgal. Gilgal is a place of waiting. Your strength is not in your sword. Your strength is in waiting. The strength of any child of God is not actually what you know. The strength of every child of God is in what? In waiting. Don't rush into marriage without waiting. Don't rush into business without waiting at Gilgal. You may lose the battle. Yeah. The battle is bigger than you. Should I tell you again? The battle you are to face in this world is bigger than you. Yesterday, yesterday night, I was preaching at World War and I told them something last night in our nature. I told them that the highest risk to take in this generation is to live a prayerless life. That is the highest risk any man can take in this generation because fierce battles are around. Fierce ones. Battles you cannot face. Battles your money cannot face. Battles your connections cannot face. Battles your education status cannot face. Battles your certificates cannot face. Battles what you know cannot face. If you are living a prayerless life, you are the highest risk taker in this life. God said to them, stay here! And because they agreed, all of them stayed here. Remember, why they were waiting, wars, rumors of wars were coming. The Jericho, the Canaanites, all of them were approaching for wars. Yet God said, wait, it's difficult. 